Okay, so me, again, um, you might recognize this outfit in this background from another video. Um, so this is my video to explain my first couple days in Italy because I didn't do that with the first videos. I wasn't planning on making sort of a vlog record, but having done just a few days of it, I've realized, wow, this is actually such a handy <laughs> system for me, for anyone who's curious about what's been going on with my trip. Even if no one else is curious, and this is only, I'm the only person who ever watches these videos, they're sort of helpful for me and just, it's fun to tell the story. Um, so, coming to Italy, um, first of all, I had a very, very long travel. Um, it was three flights, because partially it's because I was flying into Ancona, which is on the eastern coast of Italy. It's a very, very small airport, but it was, but it's very close to both where I, there was a, um, conference on the Middle Ages that I wanted to go to, and also close to where my friend Seva lives, who um, I wanted to come visit because I haven't seen him for, you know, two years um, since before the start of the pandemic. So, and also for some reason flying into Ancona was like the cheapest tickets I could find. So, but what it works out to is that I had three flights. Um, and it was 20 hours of travel, which is very intense. I was, I left Seattle on Wednesday afternoon. Um, I had an eight hour flight to Frankfurt, um, a three hour layover, an hour flight to Munich, a two hour layover, and then an hour flight to Ancona. And I was to, and I arrived in Ancona on, at 4 PM on Thursday, right? So my plan was I would sleep on that first flight and try and immediately reset my clock. Um, that sort of worked. I did sleep on the first flight. It didn't really reset my clock at all, but it was a good thing I did because um, that was one of the last periods of a significant amount of sleep that I would have for a while. Um, so I get, but I get through all of that. I get through the first flight, the very long flight, but I'm super lucky the flight is largely empty and I get a whole row to myself so I get to lie down and sleep and you know you're sleeping on a plane it's uncomfortable it's kind of painful because you can't stretch your legs out but it's definitely better than sleeping upright so that worked out really well um the layover in Frankfurt the Frankfurt airport is very nice um you know I spend a lot of time sitting around in airports <laughs> and waiting but you could be in worse places um Munich is about the same, a little smaller, I think. And so then I, I, and each time, although what's funny about it is, so the very first flight is this enormous plane, right? It's got uh, three seating areas, right? Like side, center, left. It's the kind of plane where you know that there's a second flight where the flight attendants can take naps or sleep during the flight because they're so long. It's a huge plane. Second plane, normal size. It's what I'm used to for like flights across the States. Third plane, tiny. I have to load up on the tarmac. It's like a plane from a historical movie, you know, the kind of thing that I haven't seen in the States ever. But maybe, I mean, I'm sure they existed, but it's been a really long time. So, <laughs> so a series of ever decreasing in size planes. I arrive in Ancona. The airport is tiny. It's a single building. Um, I you know, grab my luggage, which takes no time at all. And I know, and I, and I go to the bathroom. And when I come out of the bathroom, everyone else is already gone. All the other people on the plane have already gone through customs, which took about two minutes as far as I can tell. So I walk up and there's a couple people in an office standing at the side, which are the customs agents, I assume, or the border agents. And I look at them and I just say, permesso, which I mean, like, can I go through in Italian? And I guess I said it so convincingly that they just assumed, oh, she's Italian, she's coming through, because he just waved me through, he just, mm, go ahead, didn't check my papers, nothing. And <laughs> I was almost angry about it because preparing for this trip, I actually went and got two different COVID tests because I was so worried about the, it has to be done within a 72 hour range. Um, 
but also it can take up to a day to get your test results. And so I was very concerned about coming through both the German border and the Italian border within the 72 hour window and having valid test results. So I went twice just to be extra sure. Neither Germany nor Italy checked my COVID test results, which is a little concerning. They also didn't look at my EU passenger locator form, which is a whole nother fairly intense informational form that I filled out. Um, they didn't even look at my passport in the Italian um, border. They did in um, Germany, obviously. So <laughs> through customs and um, there's a shuttle that I had found out about that goes from the airport to um, the train station, which was necessary because my car rental agency office was not at the airport, it was at the train station. Originally, I had booked through the car rental agency at the airport, but when I did research, it was like everything was saying, oh, Sicily by car is a scam, they're gonna upcharge you for everything, don't go here, they're gonna fake, charges for damage it was I was terrified so I said so I found another reservation somewhere else after a whole you know and it was a whole epic thing of changing reservations multiple times because I realized oh I don't want to go into this office 